Hi everyone, welcome back to the Book Vandal Shop. Um, today I have for you a tutorial on making this um, soft cover uh, journal cover. This one's in a Christmas theme. You could do it in whatever theme you wanted. Now this is um, just like the one that you might have seen recently on the flip through that I sold recently. Um, and I had a few questions about how I made it. So that's what we're going to do today. So as you can see, the closure is just a, a single strand of ribbon that wraps around and then tucks in. And then if you also notice, it's not a real floppy fabric cover. It's a little bit stiff, has a little bit of body to it, and keeps its shape. And I've not sewn the signatures in yet. Um, and as you can see, this one's going to be another chunky one with a two-inch spine. So let's get started. I will keep this one close so we can refer to it if we need to. These are my signatures for um, the journal I'm going to be making. Um, and these signatures measure hmm, roughly four and a quarter to four and a half um, because I did not even up the page edges and I'm not going to. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a five and a half inch um, measurement. Now, when I put these, these are not for this cover, but I'm going to build a cover just like it, so work with me here. <laughs> When I put these in here, um, I want a little bit of room because I'm going to put some, some le uh, lace or edging and maybe some tabs out here, and I, I want to account for that. So I actually want my the cover we're going to be building to be a little bit uh, wider than my signatures. So if these are roughly five and a half, I'm going to give myself a half an inch uh, room. So I, I want this part to be six inches. Let me put my measurements here in the camera so you can see them as I talk about this. okay. So I'm going to count for about six inches of space here. And I already know that, of course, on the back, I'm going to want six inches of space back there. I already know that this journal is going to be very chunky like the other one. So I'm going to account for two inches back here. I'm going to account for two inches up here. And I'm going to account for two inches for a flap. Okay, so two, two, and two, that's six. Along with my six here and my six here, that makes 18 inches. Okay, my signatures are nine or eight inches tall, and I would like to have a little bit of room to play um, on the top and the bottom and uh, maybe account for a little bit of air. So I'm going to go ahead and make mine nine inches tall. Okay. So if you're going to have signatures that are roughly four and a quarter to four and a half, you would want your material to be 18 inches long by nine inches high. So that is what I've gone ahead and cut. I'm going to leave these down here in the corner for you. Um, I have gone ahead and cut my fabric 18 inches long by nine inches high. I've cut a piece for the outside and I've cut a piece for the inside. This is a deep brown. Um, I thought it would go well with the pine cones here on the reverse side. I mean, this one's going to be very grungy, so I kind of kind of thought the brown would go well. Um, so I have two pieces, one for the in, one for the out, 18 by 9 inches long. I also have, and keep in mind you need to make sure that your material is ironed and ready to go. Um, and you want to make sure that when you're cutting your fabric, um, if yours has a particular pattern on it that needs to face the right direction, um, think about whether or not, um, yeah, when you cut it, how to orient your fabric so that way, you know, you're, you're, it's facing the right way when your flap comes around. Um, also, if there's maybe um, a big uh, piece on it, you know, that you want to show on the front cover that maybe you orient it, you know, where it needs to be when you cut that out. Okay, just some things to keep in mind. Also, I cut out a piece of interfacing 18 inches by 9 inches, the same as my fabric. Now, later after it's all sewn, I will go back through and I will take my top and my bottom and I'll hold them apart and kind of trim that interfacing down a little bit. But I don't want to struggle while I'm sewing. Um, trying to keep it in its right spot. So I'm just going to cut all of it the same size now. I'll go back through and trim this a little bit shorter later. Okay, now let's talk about interfacing really quickly. This particular interfacing I purchased um, off of a, a bolt like you'd buy material on 
um, at a craft store. Um, it is, it's really stiff, okay? It's a very, very stiff interfacing, so your journal is going to have a lot of, a lot of body, you know, a lot of stiffness to it. This is also some interfacing. This is some Pellon iron-on interfacing that I had um, that I bought in a roll in a package. This is a lot thinner, okay? But it does add a little bit of stiffness to your project. Um, I use cardstock, especially when I use this thinner interfacing. And if you notice, this has kept its shape and has kept its fold. That's because of the cardstock that's on the inside. This particular interfacing, when I fold it, it just unfolds, see? And that is what's inside here. The only difference is, is I have attached cardstock to this, and that allows for me when I, I do my folds, they stay. Okay, so it helps my journal keep a little bit of its, of its shape, especially when you're using thin interfacing like this. Now when I say cardstock, I'm actually using a file folder, and the reason for that is I can get one whole piece out of one file folder, and I'm not piecing together um, pieces of uh, cardstock. So I have gone ahead and drawn out on my file folder how I wanted it. The reason I did that is because there is a factory fold here on my file folder. I would like my factory fold to match up with one of the spines on my journal. See? And then this would fold on over. So this line here, my factory fold, corresponds with this point right here. Then I had a two inch back spine, which is right here. Okay. And then this section right here is this section here. Basically, it looks like this. Okay. Okay. This one's going to be a little bit bigger than this one. That's why it doesn't completely match up. Okay. So there's my six inches here. I had a two inch front spine. And then my flap is not getting any cardstock on it. There's no cardstock here. The reason for that is when you have a cover like this and you slide it down into a, a backpack or a, a purse or a, a tote bag and this gets caught, you don't want it to be permanently creased. You want it to just plop back in its place. So I don't put any cardstock right here where the flap is at, just the interfacing and the fabric only. Okay. So that being said, my file folder then is uh, going to be 16 inches long, two inches shorter than my interfacing and my fabric, 16 inches. The other thing I'm doing is I'm cutting my file folder a little bit shorter than my fabric and my interfacing. So if this is nine, I'm, I'm gonna cut my cardstock to be about eight and a half. Okay, so that gives me about a half inch on the top and the bottom. I'm already going to be trimming off my interfacing between my two layers of material so it doesn't stick out so far. But I really don't want my file much of my file folder sticking out either. Okay, so I am just gonna go ahead and trim it at eight and a half. All right, so I do have my file folder marked out. I do not have it cut yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it, okay? Eight and a half inches tall by 16 inches wide. Um, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> I had to think about if that was all I wanted to tell you. So I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my cardstock all trimmed. Um, real quick, I forgot. You know, I was telling you about how I wanted my cardstock to be just a little bit smaller than my um, uh, interfacing. So I said I was cutting this 16 and leaving a two inch flap that makes it flush on this end. So actually, I'm gonna take it back to my paper cutter and I'm gonna trim about a quarter of an inch off on this side. So really, I want my cardstock to be about 15 and three quarters. You know, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could trim this off later after we sew it. It doesn't really matter. But I am gonna trim about a quarter inch off. And I'll, I'll, I'll do that off camera, hang on. All right, so. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and attach this cardboard to my interfacing so it's not wiggling around on me when I'm trying to put all of this um, together. So I'm just going to tack it down with some glue. I'm using some Elmer's uh, tacky glue just because it dries fast and it's uh, uh, really sticky. You use whatever glue you want to. 
Um, what I also want to do is I'm going to go ahead and fold along these lines so that I can find them easily. And I could get my scoreboard out and do this, but it doesn't have to be that exact. Okay. Just think it makes it easier to find them especially after we glue the interfacing to it. Okay. All right. So that'll look like that. And then my fabric will finish coming around. I'm going to glue this on this way. So my card stuck's on the outside. And I just do that because um, it just seems like it folds better that way. It kind of pushes the interfacing into place rather than if I had the card stuck on the inside um, like this and I'm trying to keep it folded, the interfacing wants to keep unfolding it. Seems like it works better sometimes this way. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> it really honestly um, doesn't make a difference. As long as you just, if you fold your folds first so you can find them and then tack it down so it's not such a pain. Um, you know to keep it in place while you're sewing it and pinning it and all that so not real worried about getting every little nook and cranny because we're just really just tacking it down temporarily okay so I'm kind of centering it between my top and bottom and I'm just going to stay off the edge a little bit Okay. All right. Just wanting it to stay in place. Okay. And I've gone ahead and folded it so that way later when I've I've um, sewn my fabric on the inside and outside, I can find those folds a whole lot easier that way. And I don't have to be measuring anything later. Since I have it all measured out now. Okay, now we're ready for our fabric. So see how that's going to work? And then the interfacing will just fold on over. So now we've got our fabric. And the glue's not wanting to stick too well because I'm hurrying it. Now my fabric doesn't really have a top or a bottom, so it doesn't really matter how I put it on. Okay. So I just want to center that in there. Okay. We just need to get it pretty good. We can always trim the interfacing after we sew it. And I put that on there. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot. I want a pocket on this. Um, and I could wait and glue my pocket in after I've sewn everything together. You see, like on this journal, I didn't put a pocket in. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I can go back now and I can glue a pocket on here. And it won't soak through my fabric because I have all that on the inside. But on this one, I already know what I'm doing. And I'm taking some of my exterior fabric um, and using that as a pocket on the inside. I folded it over there and gave it a little hem. And so I want to glue that on. So let me orient this the right way. So here's my flap over here, which means this is my front cover side. Okay. So when it lays open, and I don't want to get into that spine. Where is that? That is right here. Okay. So I'm actually, I'm going to put my pocket right about there. And I'm going to go uh, sew this on with my sewing machine real quick, and I'll be right back. Um, I may, I'll, I probably will pin this in a couple of places before I sew it so I don't lose where it's at. Okay, I'll sew that, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my pocket sewn on. Now I'm ready to line everything up. And I'm just going to get it all nice and even all the way around. Okay, and then I'm going to pin it. And so my flap is over here. So when I'm pinning, I'm gonna go around with all my, my pins. Um, 
I am going to sandwich my Sari Silk ribbon in to my cover like that in between my layers okay so I'm just going to pin that down so that's how I'm going to pin okay and so I'm going to get all of that pinned except for the corners because I'm going to cut these I'm going to round them out but I don't really want to do that till I get it all pinned so that it doesn't move around on me so I'm going to get everything all pinned and then I'm going to come back and round my corners and pin those Okay, I have everything pinned now, my tie and then all my straight edges here, but I haven't pinned the corners yet. And all I have here is just a lid from my little my little paper clip container. And I'm just going to use it as a pattern to round my corners a little bit here. I'm just going to trace that just a little bit. And trace this one. I'm not in my light very well, am I? That didn't help very much, did it? Okay. And find my fabric scissors. And I'm just going to cut along that line I traced. Ouch. Stab myself with a pin. Sorry about that. I threw my scissors down. That was probably pretty loud. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's a junk journal. It's not supposed to look perfect. Okay. So now I'm ready to just pin these corners a little bit and uh, run it through my sewing machine. Now, I don't know about you. My sewing machine will run right over the top of my pins and do just fine as long as I have them uh, perpendicular uh, to my stitch line and not parallel to it. Mine will run back over, but yours may not, so don't forget to take your pins out if, you, you know, if you're worried about them damaging your machine. Okay, I'm going to run this through the machine. I'm just going to go around all around the edge, okay? And I'm doing a zigzag stitch because I like the way it looks. Um, I like the rustic look of that. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. You do whatever you want. And I'm going to use red so it contrasts with it. Okay, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I've sewn around the outside edge. And I've removed all my pins. And if you've noticed, I did some starting and stopping, some back stitching here or there. Um, just because I kind of wanted that rustic um, look to go with the theme. So the, the, what I want to do now, and you don't have to do this step, that is completely up to you. Um, but I would like this to not be so plain on the inside. Um, so I'd like to put a little bit more decorative stitching there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a row of stitches down here. And then I think I'm going to run a row down here. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it on all the corners. But I am at least going to run one row of stitches down the um, flap just to kind of give it a little bit of definition and dress it up a little bit here. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to come right back. Okay, I just decided just to go down the flap. That was it. The reason I did that is it's kind of trying to pucker on me a little bit um, with the fabric being loose. Um, and I just, I don't know, I didn't want it to do that. So I left it as it was. Okay, so now to keep some of that interfacing from showing, um, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to trim anything that I don't like. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my fabrics back. A little easier said than done. It's really not that hard, but you know, being on camera, <laughs> I'm just holding my my fabrics back and trimming. Okay, and I'm just going to go through and trim down. Um, being very careful not to cut any of my fabrics and being very careful not to cut off my um, ribbon. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it off camera. Then I'll come right back. Alrighty, I've gone through. I've trimmed off some of the interfacing here so you can't really see it. I've left a little bit here just to show you something. Um, my big scissors are sometimes hard to get in between 
there so I use my little my little scissors um, and I think it's a little bit easier to get it in that space and trim around um, and you don't even have to do it at all it doesn't really hurt if it if it shows um, I already trimmed most of all this so I don't really have anything left to trim here just try to get that little piece off I just loosened up here um, but I did trim almost all of it with these little scissors because it's easier to get in there the next thing you can do which is totally optional is I'm using some of my um, stays on ink the reason I'm using stays on is because it once it dries it's dry it's not like the uh, Tim Holtz distress ink because once you get that wet um, you know it runs a little bit again so you can if you want to go through and you could even ink up your interfacing a little bit so it looks a little more blended in a little bit dirty and distressed and maybe isn't so bright especially if you're making a cover that's you know of a grungy style okay just dirty that up just a little bit And then if your fabric's wanting to stay popped up after you've gave it a little bit of a trim, you can always run it uh, iron over the top of it and that'll put it back down where it needs to go. Okay. Dirtied that up a little bit. So now it's not so noticeable. You really won't see it when it's all done anyway. You just, you just, you don't notice those things when you get it all put together. Okay. Oop, sorry, give you a little ride there. Yeehaw. All right, so I've inked that up a little bit. And then the other thing you can do um, is you can get your threads loosened up on this fabric so it looks a little bit, see here, it's already started to do it over here. Okay, and if you can't get them loose, just take a razor knife or something. And if you run it like that, you'll get them to start loosening up. Okay. just run it all the way pull them all the way down until you get enough of them loosened up that you like the look that you've got okay sitting there grabbing air <laughs> alright so yeah if you can't get them loose just go like that and they will loosen right up Okay. just pull one or two at a time if you try to do too many at one time it binds up and you can't get them to come out of there and they won't go past your stitching okay once you once you've pulled them they'll stop when they get to your stitching here okay and then just loosen up a few more like that and just give a few of them a little tug all right so I'm not going to do all that on camera obviously um, I'll finish that up off screen um, and I think for this part, we're done, especially as I'm about uh, 23 minutes in. Okay, when we come back next time, we're going to sew our signatures in. So if that's something you need to see, uh, join me next time when I uh, sew the signatures in this. Um, and I'll probably figure out something that I want to put here. The other thing I'm going to do after I sew my signatures in is I've got some decorative ribbon I'm going to use on the spine. Um, so that's it for now. Um, if you don't need to see the signatures being sewn in, then you're pretty much done. Hope this was um, inspirational for you and something you can use in your own crafting. All right, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.